Oh yeah, I think I got a whitey. Get the old go-go. Get the go-go minnow. <laughs> I put out the marker and we've caught all our crappie within 20 or 30 feet of the boat. Okay. Getting bigger, we're gonna start, we're gonna change this over and do a crappie show here in a minute. That's a freaking crappie, Jesus. Another toad. Slabosaurus rex, for all you crappie fishermen out there, that's the prehistoric term for a white crappie. Hey guys and gals, Scott Turnage, G3 Sportsman, with Jeff Williams with Flea Fly on the Grand River here in uh, Northwest Oklahoma. We're just below the uh, dam here on Grand Lake. It's a kind of a cool, crisp, beautiful, sunny spring day and we're looking for white bass. So uh, what are we looking for, Jeff, on the Lowrance there? Well, what we've got, Big Eddie right here, um, water comes around this bluff and it kind of carved out a couple holes right in here and we're just looking to see if we can find any of these fish uh, staging. It's uh, April 10th, 8th, 9th, 10th, somewhere around there. And uh, so these fish are just like anywhere else, they're moving on up into the rivers and getting ready to spawn and we're going to chase them and here in a minute when we get a few located. We're going to start uh, casting. Maybe we'll catch us a few. So stick with us. It's always fun catching white bass in the spring. I see down in Texas we'd be hitting this bank right here. I'm going to probably be using a big eye. I just don't know how big. You got a spoon, Bill? I don't think I got a spoon, Bill. I think I got a whitey. Good. Oh, yeah. I think I got a whitey. Hit the old go-go. Hit the go-go minnow. Nice guy. I think I'll just hit the anchor lock right here. And Put the old hackberry flip on him right off the bat. Yes, sir. First white bass of the year for me. Out here on a beautiful day white bass, or now that we're in Oklahoma, that'd be called a sand bass. Nice fish. Yeah, good little start to the day right here. We've got just a little bit of, just a little bit of current. That's, uh, that's what we're wanting. I think they're running a, what, a generator or two maybe? It's hard to tell. I think they're kind of mixing it off and on a little bit, but there is some current. There's fish. There you go, Jeffy. There you go. He's right on bottom, wasn't he? Little whitey, I was coming right up off the bottom. Yep. Coming right off the bottom. He ate the old... He buster, got the front hook. Buster Blue Truffle Kicker. He got the old front hook. Show the guys, after you get that fish in, Jeff, what we're, what we're fishing with. I'm giving them a variety today, but man, they fight hard, ain't Look they? Look how fat. Oh, yeah. Look like a big old gut like me. Nothing wrong with that. Beautiful white bass here in April. Come out here and stretch your string, have a good time. Ain't nothing better, man. Show them what the kind of rig you got going on here. Now we've tied a double rig here, and uh, these products are available at Flea Fly. Uh, these are uh, eighth ounce big eye jig heads, and this is a two and a half inch Buster Blue Crappie Kicker. Okay, that fish hit that one that I just caught. And then over here, I've got the Old Faithful Chartreuse with Metal Flake, two and a half inch Go-Go Minnow. We've got those tied about 18, 16, 18 inches apart. And uh, I use the Lawrence locator right here. We've, we've found a little school of fish out here in this little eddy. Scott hooked one there just a second ago and he didn't get it in and I threw in right there behind him and caught one. So one of the tips I can tell you, and we haven't figured it out exactly today, but these fish in this current Sometimes they want that bait coming down current. Sometimes they want it coming across the current. It just depends on how they're positioned under the water down there. 
Yeah, so, you know, just because you don't get a bite when you locate some fish, you know, change up your cast, you know, throw across, throw down, throw up, and then bring it by. And then eventually they'll, you'll, you'll figure out which way they want it because every day is different with these fish. They're no different from any other fish. Start out with two different colors too. And if you got a partner in the boat, let them fish with different colors and start putting your pattern together that way. Like that. That's a white, I can feel his tail. I can feel his tail, you can just, you can just feel them tails just digging. Oh yeah. You can just see big that old, old tail. Big old porker. Boy, they're eating that firecracker up, aren't they? Yeah, I'll show you what Jeff was talking about earlier when we was with two people in the boat and having different colors. Well, I mean, he thumped it too now, right in the roof of the mouth. A little male. See, where Jeff had the two variations of green, I've got a, I've got a chartreuse big eye jig on here. And then what color is this, Jeff? Buster Brown. Buster Brown. That's what I call my cat, my big yellow cat, Buster Brown, Buster T. Brown. And that's a, a crappie kicker. You can see the little tail. And then I've got the pink, man, the buzzards flew over my head. I got a pink big eye jig here. And then my favorite combination is with the firecracker. So I've got that, that's a go-go minnow. So you can see I want the action on my, on my back bait right here to attract. There's a little crappie. Little bit of crappie. Now that's a dandy right there, boy. <laughs> I mean, that's a dandy. All right, the crappie are getting just a little bit bigger. And right there, see, every time we get a bite, seems to be off the nose of that boat. And that's what we're seeing right here. Got it? Feel like a crappie? I don't know, it's funny feeling. I was just gonna say, yeah. got something that doesn't feel quite right. Well, we're gonna start, they're getting bigger. We're gonna start, we're gonna change this over and do a crappie show here in a minute. That one's a keeper. Yeah, he's, he's about there, isn't he? If he wants to keep a fish, that's the fish you want to keep. Use your crappie kicker. Or your gauge right there, Jeff. It's right there in front of you. Right here, right there. Oh. I think I got a crappie too. For those of you that have never, oh yeah, we're gonna do, we're gonna look like we got a couple keepers right there, but here in Oklahoma, Northeast Oklahoma, you have to have on this particular body of water, the fish has to be 10 inches. Well, there's no doubt that, that this fish here is gonna be way over 10 inches, but we'll, uh, we'll let Scott hold this one and I'll measure, I'll measure this fish. We're gonna put that one in the live well because that fresh fried crappie sounds pretty good. And that's about a 10 and a half inch crappie. And if you've never used a crappie gauge, um, you're gonna to wanna to get one of these. They got marks on them from seven, eight, nine, and 10 inches and uh, they're a flea fly product, and they are handy as a pocket on a t-shirt when you're crappie fishing. Handy as a pocket on a t-shirt. I'm telling you, man, them crappie are down there. That's a crappie there. It feels like a nice crappie. Big crappie too, Jeff. <laughs> Holy crap. There we go. Yeah, here we are on a, doing a crappie episode here <laughs> on the Grand River. I told you there's gonna be crappie in here. We, we, want, we thought we might get into the white since that was the first thing we caught, but that's a nice Grand Lake crappie. That's right a good there. crappie anywhere, Jeff. Beautiful fish. That's a good, that's a 12 inch crappie. That's the uh, Buster Blue crappie kicker. And uh, he's getting ready to find a new home up here in this G3 live well. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, the one thing that can make you extremely successful in the water is boat control and where we've located some fish, we're not sitting here fighting the trolling motor, trying to stay on them and as we, as, you know, normally with a cable drive trolling motor. These electric steer trolling motors, this is a Minn Kota Taroba 80. They have, you talk about much improved. We've been here for probably 30 minutes. We set this, Jeff set the spot lock on this bad boy and I'll bet you we have not moved in any direction four feet from our buoy. Got him? Yep, another crappie. Got another crappie? Another crappie. Do believe so. 
I believe that is. Nice one. Woo-wee! Look at that rascal. Oh, fight like a white bass. You he mean, is, crop, isn't he? You think he was hungry? I mean, Look at he... that go-go minnow. Gulp. <laughs> hey, the cameraman's going to take the best fish home yet. What are you thinking, Jeff, that, you know, we came in here to, to start going after the white bass, and we've caught some, but now the crappie has our attention. So that's always the neat part at this time of year when you come up in the river is to go after the white bass and or the crappie. So what do you think, Jeff, that's got these, uh, got these crappie in here? Uh, well, guys, if you're fishing for white bass and crappie and you've got current, the current changes all the time. So what you want to do is you want to come in here and you want to find these slack water areas. And what we've got, we've got the main current running down the middle of the river. There's a big eddy over on that side of the river. And there's an eddy on this side of the river. And over years, those eddies have carved out a little bit deeper hole. And what happens, those crappie and those white bass, a lot of times, especially when they're not super active, They'll go to a certain spot in there where they're comfortable, where that current's going around in a circle in those eddies. Got him? Got him. Another crappie. Go ahead. And uh, that's what we figured out. Uh, we used the locator. I thought I saw a school of crappie right up here. <laughs> Look, at that. Look at that. I put out the marker, and we've caught all our crappie within 20 or 30 feet of the boat. Guarantee it. The, the, the trove is holding us right here, and I think we're right in the middle of this eddy what I think and yeah. he, he ate the, that go-go didn't he man I'll tell you now that right there the big eye pink but the, can you get me another go-go out of there because this one have, I've already caught five crappie and four white bass off that thing that's another great thing about these baits they're not a wimpy bait they're not one to where you're just going to catch a fish and then have to throw it away and put another bait on Jeff, you may be losing money. You made these baits awfully strong. I mean, when you can catch 10 or 12 fish off of one bait, I mean, you, that's a good bait. And that, that, that says a lot about the company right there. Well, the lures are good lures and they catch a lot of fish. And they when do. you catch a lot of fish, you better have a durable bait. There you go. There you go, right there. As you can see, we're in the, the G3 V17C. This is a single console. We've got it equipped with the 150 SHO. We've got the power pole two Lowrance Elite TIs. This boat is huge, guys, for a 17-foot boat. We've got a 96-inch across right here. Me and Jeff are up here on the front deck. We've got a big front deck. Me and him both have plenty of room. Two live wells, rod locker, storage galore. This is the perfect boat for what we are doing today, and this is why we've chosen it. It's great for the river. It's great for the open water. It rides really well. It's safe. It's, it's, it's just one of the, to me, one of the most all around perfect boats that you can fish. You can fish from the back, you can fish from the front. Check them out at g3boats.com, the G3V17C. Golly, if that's a freaking crappie, she's just another toad. Well, it, it, I think it is. I can just tell by the way it's swimming. Look at that Slabosaurus Rex <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tell you now, ain't nothing wrong with that. Slabosaurus rex, for all you crappie fishermen out there, that's the prehistoric term for a white crappie, a big one. We ran through, we watched our Lowrance, it's coming through, we found a few crappie, we threw us out a marker. And so as Jeff was telling you earlier, you know, with the eddy current that's coming through, the flow of the current of the water is coming this way, We've got an eddy right through here and another one over there. And I'm not too sure that the crappie probably wouldn't be in that same area over there in that eddy as they are here. So watch your current, look at your eddies, check your depth finder on these rivers right here. When you're looking for white bass, you can get lucky like us and then get into some crappie. There's a fish right there. Good deal. What I mean, thumped it, Jeff. That's a whitey. That's a whitey right there. You can tell on those tails. I mean, they give you everything. You just feel it. Just whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, there was a hit right there under the boat. There he is. Right there. Caught him on the front, on the front too. 
Old Buster got him. Old Buster Brown. Let me tell you, boys, the rivers are some of the most fun places to catch fish. You know, in the springtime, here we are, April 10th. We come out here, we've got some white bass. That was our original plan. We was gonna come out and catch a few white bass, but instead, what we got into, and uh, nobody's ever gonna fuss and argue about that, is we got into a mess of these old girls right here. So don't overlook the rivers. There's a fun place to go and fish. You come in in the spring, go after white bass, even catch a few crappie. You know, I hope we kind of helped you a little bit in understanding what we were doing today. We were fishing the eddies off the current just out of the, um, out of the middles right here. And uh, we marked them some fish, we put out a buoy, and we basically just stayed in the same place. Yep, the fish just moved around the boat slightly and we just we just followed them, but they were in the middle of this eddy. That's right, and we just hit the anchor feature on the Minn Kota. We kept our G3 just steady as a rock right there. They've actually cut a little bit of the current down, so we may move on to another spot, but for right now, that's all the time we got for this little episode. Thank you for watching. Just remember, check out uh, Jeff Williams and his uh, Flea Fly brand. Right there, that's what we've called every fish on right here is the Flea Fly. Go to them, fleafly.com, is that right? That's right. And check them out. Support the people that support you guys in putting all these great shows together and everything. And uh, I, I think you'll be very pleased with the results on these and we've showed you what they'll do. So, hey, I'm Scott Turnage for Jeff Williams. Thanks for watching and we'll be out there somewhere next week right here on the G3 Sportsman. Thanks for watching.